of the vulnerabilities that can be exploited by threat actors. Every cybersecurity incident involves the exploitation of vulnerabilities by different types of threat actors. Some threat actors want money, others want to be famous, and yet others want to destroy information and infrastructure. In this activity, Investigate a Threat Landscape, you will investigate three vulnerabilities that can be exploited by threat actors. Packetracer opens in Greenville, the data center and the ISP are both locked for this activity. You will use branch office, the cafe, and the home. Part 1. Investigate a network configuration vulnerability. Sometimes network security vulnerabilities can happen by accident. For example, forgetting to update server or host software may expose known vulnerabilities that could easily be mitigated by a simple update. Vulnerabilities may be introduced when a network device is not configured properly or a device is defective. In Part 1, you will explore a vulnerability that results from a device that is not properly configured with security best practices. Step 1 is use a guest network to gain access to other devices on the network. In Greenville, locate Smartphone 3 just outside the home location. Mary is the owner of this smartphone. She is a friend of Bob who lives in the house. Mary is studying to eventually get a job in cybersecurity defense and is familiar with network penetration testing. She noticed that a guest wireless network is open and accessible by anyone. She connected to the guest network and used Nmap to run a scan, which can identify and discover details about all the active devices. One of the devices appears to be a webcam. Its IP address is 192.168.100.101. Click Smartphone 3 and then click Command Prompt. Enter the command ping 192.168.100.101. Mary informs Bob that the network is very vulnerable to attack. Someone could take control of the webcam, for example, and watch video from inside the house. Bob invites Mary to come in and investigate the issue and propose a solution. Step 2 is explore the home network to identify the vulnerability. Click Home. Knowing that home routers typically control home wireless networks, Mary heads straight for the home office and sits behind the desk. She will use the home office PC to connect to the router, but first she needs to determine the IP address. Click Home Office PC, Desktop tab, and then Command Prompt. Enter the command ipconfig. The default gateway is 192.168.100.1. This is the IP address for the home wireless router. Next, Mary uses the web browser to connect to the home wireless router. Close the command prompt and click Web Browser, and then enter the default gateway IP address. Bob does not have the documentation for the router, nor does he know the login credentials. So Mary looks up the router model on the internet and discovers that the default credentials use admin for both the username and password. Log in to the home wireless router. Click Wireless. Notice that the router has three radios and all three of them are active. Two use the SSID home net and one uses the SSID guest. Click the Wireless Security submenu. Notice that security is activated for the two HomeNet SSIDs, but not for the guest SSID. Mary was able to access the network from outside without logging in. Therefore, she investigates further. Click the Guest Network submenu and investigate the settings. Notice that the guest network is active, is allowed access to other devices on the network, and has no security enabled. The guest network should be deactivated or configured with basic security such as strong authentication, SSID broadcast disabled, and access to local network devices disabled. Part 2. Investigate a phishing malware vulnerability. 
Phishing is a type of social engineering attack where threat actors disguise themselves as being a legitimate trusted source in order to trick you into installing malware on your device or share personal or financial information. Phishing attacks typically come through emails or phone calls. Unlike other network vulnerabilities, the primary vulnerability in phishing attacks is the users of the network. For this reason, an important defense against phishing is training users on how to prevent phishing exploits. In part two, you will simulate and investigate a phishing attack. Before we proceed, it is important to note that this is a demonstration within a simulated environment. Writing and sending phishing messages is unethical and is considered a criminal act in most jurisdictions. Step one is pose as a threat actor and create a phishing email. Navigate to the CAFE network. Click CAFE Hacker Laptop Desktop tab Email. Click Compose. Use your imagination to write a phishing email. Your objective is to persuade the user to copy and paste a URL from your email message into their browser. Include the link pics.example.com in the email. I have one already composed. Dear valued customer, we have experienced an unusual amount of activity on your account. Your username and password may be compromised. Please visit the following site to reset your password, pics.example.com. Note, for security purposes, copy the link and paste it into your web browser. Respectfully, Pix Security Team. Send your email to three people inside the branch office network. Wait for a send success message. Packet Tracer may take a few moments to converge. Step two is open the emails received from the threat actor. Navigate to the branch office. All three devices received the email. Let's click laptop BR2. Click Desktop tab, Email, and then click Receive. Step 3 is pose as a victim and follow the phishing instructions. Read the email and copy the website address. Close the Mail browser window and then click Web Browser. Paste the URL into the URL field and click Go. Packet Tracer may take up to a minute to converge. You can click Fast Forward Time to speed up the process. We get a message that says the hard drive has been encrypted and that we will need to pay $600 to recover the files. This is an example of a ransomware attack. In a real-world situation, this email is typically spread by a virus that automatically sends malicious emails to all the addresses in your contact list. If the virus spreads this message to everyone in the network, and those users also follow the instructions, then numerous hard drives could be encrypted and a lot of data potentially lost. In some cases, companies and other organizations have paid thousands of dollars in hopes of recovering the encrypted data. Employees should be trained how to identify phishing emails and the actions that should be taken to prevent becoming a victim. In addition, organizations should configure firewalls intrusion prevention systems, and other security devices and software to block phishing emails before entering the network. Some businesses subscribe to services that compile and maintain lists of malicious websites. The security devices in the organization can then use these lists to automatically update filters for blocking malicious traffic. Part 3. Investigate a wireless network and DNS vulnerability. Your average network user tends to trust open Wi-Fi networks out in public places. Using Wi-Fi instead of cellular data services can provide faster data rates and be more cost effective. However, threat actors can configure a laptop with a Wi-Fi interface that can act as both a Wi-Fi access point and a Wi-Fi client. This means that threat actors can create their own wireless networks and broadcast a convincing SSID to potential victims in public places. Threat actors use these rogue access points to create man-in-the-middle attacks. 
In this attack, threat actors can capture and read all the wireless traffic from devices that associate with the rogue access point, potentially learning usernames, passwords, and other confidential information. In Part 3, you will investigate how a rogue access point can be used to entice users to connect to a fake wireless network. When combined with network services such as DHCP and DNS, users can become victims of malicious website attacks through DNS hijacking. Step 1 is connect to the threat actor's wireless network. Navigate to the cafe. Notice the threat actor sitting in the corner. Click the hacker backpack and investigate the contents. In his backpack, he has a wireless router and a network sniffer. His goal is to intercept user traffic and direct it to a malicious server. Return to the cafe and click the cafe customer laptop, desktop tab, PC wireless. Click the connect tab. You may need to click refresh to see all the list of available wireless networks. Notice that three of the wireless network names are Cafe Wi-Fi Fast. These are open networks, meaning there is no security enabled. The Cafe Wi-Fi network has security. Click any of the Cafe Wi-Fi Fast network names and then click Connect. Step 2 is visit your favorite social media site. Close the PC Wireless application and click Web Browser. In the URL field, enter friends.example.com. This website is supposed to be a legitimate social network in this simulation. Notice that even though the URL is different from the one we entered earlier, we got the same ransomware message that we got in Part 2. Step 3 is investigate the source of the attack. Close the web browser window and click IP Configuration. In the cafe, click VPN Laptop and then IP Configuration. Click Cafe Customer from your taskbar to bring it back into view and then arrange the two IP Configuration windows side by side. Compare the values between the two devices. Notice that the host IP addresses are different, but this is normal. However, if you have understanding of subnetting, you can see that the two devices are on different networks. VPN Laptop is on the 0 network, and Cafe Customer is on the 10 network. In addition, the DNS server addresses are different. 10.2.0.125 on the VPN Laptop and 192.168.10.199 on the Cafe Customer Laptop. Investigate the IP address for the Cafe Hacker Laptop. Notice that it is 192.168.10.199, which is the DNS server address configured on the Cafe Customer Laptop. On the Cafe Hacker Laptop, click the Services tab, DNS. Locate the name for the friends.example.com website. Note that the IP address is the same IP address that is associated with pix.example.com from the phishing attack earlier, 10.6.0.250. Under Services, click DHCP. Notice that the DNS server address distributed to host over DHCP is the same one assigned to CAFE customer. So what happened here? When CAFE customer connected to the Rogue Access Point's wireless network, it received an IP address configuration from the DHCP server running on the CAFE hacker laptop. The DHCP server is configured to distribute the hacker laptop address as the DNS server address. The DNS server on the Cafe Hacker Laptop is configured to associate the IP address of a malicious server 
10.6.0.250 with the name of a popular website, friends.example.com. When the user of the cafe laptop tries to visit the website, traffic is directed to the malicious server instead. Ransomware is then installed on the cafe customer laptop and the user's files are encrypted. In this activity, we have looked at three different ways in which vulnerabilities can lead to exploits. As an informed network user or cybersecurity professional, it is your responsibility to think about different ways in which such vulnerabilities can be detected and mitigated before a cyber attack occurs.